are hit. I will need to be mentally and physically prepared for tomorrow. Stay cool and collected as autumn. I pocket the fire and stay on my watch until access to excess excess uh, exhaustion bewildered me into resting my eyes just for a few minutes. <laughs> Something's bad gonna happen and I just sleep on guard. No, it's okay. <laughs> hey. Uh. Oh, please. I've had less sleep than you and I'm already oh, energized and ready to go. Potent, I poke care some more with the walking stick I had fashioned for him. It hadn't been easy to find a starter stick in a birch forest, but I had located a long one that will suffice. I had to spend the morning carving off any bark and had even intended top to make it easier to grip. Now it was a dragon prod. Ah, oh, bro, I suck with dragon. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> Gear hastily shot up, throwing up my blanket into a feeble attempt to hide the fact he had used it. He is angry. I decided to counter his usual skull with the perkiest, most cheerful grin I could master. <laughs> Good morning. My buoyancy was genuine. For some reason, it satisfied me to know that my bebashiousness irked him. I could use my sunny disposition to my advantage. It'll be better than snapping at him, at any rate. Stop poking me with that. <laughs> it's your walking stick. Here, you're welcome. <laughs> it turned it sideways and offered it to him. He wearily gazed at it as if it was presenting a cobra instead, but carefully grasped it. Cautiously, he pressed the stick against the ground and he stood up. I remain close, lest that he topple over like yesterday. Right. His fingers drum against the carp handle and he look at me quizzically. You spend time on this? Right. Well, I wanted to finish it up with a pretty flowing ribbon, but I had the feeling you wouldn't like it. Glumbling. <laughs> Grumbling. Uh, Kier took a step forward, leaning on the stick before hesitant hesitantly taking another. With each step he regained some confidence, and soon he was walking with a straight line, albeit with an uneven gait. He could not exactly break into a run or even press a stride, but it was a huge improvement from last night. I estimated we could reach the cave leading to the altar by mid-afternoon. I quickly packed and followed him, since I had the feeling the only thing on his mind was the altar. It's this way. He pointed toward the gentle incline, incline and Kier narrowed his eyes resentfully. Going downhill would probably be difficult for him. As we headed towards our destination, I kept my distance at first, but I gradually drew toward Kier, one hand extended in anticipation of a stumble. Kier balked and increased the distance between us, determined to progress on his own. However, his pace was execrantingly slow, and he was unwilling to start any small talk and the slope gradually stepped it. His footing became more unsteady and I worryingly grabbed his arm from support. <laughs> what? He trailed around in surprise and I actually didn't end up bracing him. And once he was stable again, I sighed. Look, I know you don't like me touching you, but if your priority is get to the altar as soon as possible, I think you can swallow your dignity and accept my help. Besides, no one else is no one else is around here. You've done enough. I don't need any more of your help from you. What? He shifted his weight and started using the stick to warm me away. I frowned disapprovingly. Hey, if you try to hit me with that thing, I'll confiscate it. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Even I wouldn't do something like that. Grinning his teeth, he leaned heavily against one of the bridge stairs. When I get back, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Who? Oh. My master. His curt answer still the torrent of questions spilling out my head. It will be poor for me to interrogate him when he was still obviously overwhelmed by the situation. Right now the goal was more important. Right, <laughs> then let's get you to that game. You believe me? Everything I told you? 
Maybe you're just a very convincing actor, but I think even an actor will drop his charade after a little. <laughs> just as I was about to reach for him again, a low grumble pierced the forest. I glanced at Kira and amused both flamed. He burned his eyes, but I could tell he was embarrassed. You know, if you're hungry... Okay. <laughs> Uh, I think you'll be able to walk faster if you have something to eat. What did Dragon see anyway? <laughs> yeah. Persons. People. Middling heaven kind. I rolled my eyes. Well, you have a heaven kind stomach now. No, and I doubt we'll agree with a diet like that. But it does make sense that you wouldn't want to try the bread or cheese. I love dragons trash rye or room dire forms. It was then that I remembered the apple tart. Even if Kerr found the pastry part death stable, the fruit would probably be familiar to him. I urged him to sit down. When he refused, I simply made my house myself comfortable on the ground first. Here, this is the closest thing I have to something found in nature. I could forage, but that will even take longer. What is that? Now you're curious, huh? <laughs> It's a pastry. My dad owns a bakery. Um, you probably wouldn't understand that. It's basically a tread with apple filling. And I think some apricot jam. Thankfully, my dad prefers showing off the natural ingredients. As so a result, the top of the tart had thin slices of appetizing fruit covered with a lustrous yellow glaze. <laughs> nice. Kira sniffing it wearily. It must have been agreeable now since he soon accepted the pastry. He was starving. Yeah, you're welcome. As soon as he started nibbling on it, he must have realized how famished he really was because he quickly deported the entire tart. I watched as he caught slightly and wiped off the crumbs of his mouth, but his expression was unreadable. So, how was it? Anything tastes fine when you're starving. Or it's just an island so fast you didn't actually taste it. Well, it should tide you over until we reach the altar. Kira grabbed his stick, and we resume our trip. The extra sugar boots seemed to lift both the pace and his mood, although he stayed taciturn. As we continue through the forest, I stop and groan when I spotted some dark trees. <sighs> Those are elfin trees. Completely forgot. We should probably go around them. He fell on. He peered at the thick <laughs> garlanded trunks. <laughs> what? Scare with the bark? It'll be quicker if we continue in a straight line. No, it's not about the trees. It's what lies in them. They make perfect nests for Abby Terrells. Yeah? <laughs> Those giant bird things. I thought you would know about them. I would if I understood your names. Why are you giving me new names to everything anyway? We dragons were here first, and we already established... I raised my hand to silence him, not wanting to make any unnecessary noise. He scold, but a shrill cry started with both of us. <laughs> then what do you call that? Usually food. Well, that'd be us now. Perch in one of the lower branches was a reptilian bird with scales running down its front. The rest of its body was covered in air toned feathers. So, probably not taller than four feet, its extremely wide wingspan and sharp talons made it a fearsome animal to encounter in the wild. Abiturus raised young way into the fall, so the monsters will be extra territorial. The mothers. I <laughs> heard the monsters. So the mothers will be extraterritorial this time of the year. The bird brought its plume, making itself seem larger than it was, and prepared to launch itself at us. I immediately stepped in front of Kier, gripping my sword as I took a defensive stance. With Kier's condition, an instant retreat wouldn't work, and I have to guard him. Yeah. What are you doing? You're not planning to fight it, are you? Do we have a choice? Look out! I shoved Kira off balance. Thanks to my quick reflexes, we narrowly avoid a slash from the Arbiteral's talents. 
The wind wiped on my hair and as the debris flew up around us. I scrambled to my feet and sprinted forward, hoping to keep the Avatar's attention away from Kier. As it dove towards me, I slashed upward. Kier, I'll keep it busy while you get away. Are you stupid? I'm not leaving you behind. K Kier? I need to take y I need you to take me to that altar. Alright. Maybe you shout at the directions of me. I could get there alone. I'm kinda busy here. I can't get my bearings in the middle of a battle. My aggregation was incentive and I needed to keep the arbitrary at bay. However, my training had never covered aerial attacks, and the burst scale in front was like an armor. Are you holding back? Uh, well, it's just protecting its young. It's trying to kill you. You think I haven't noticed? Oh, for the wings. Clip them. It won't hurt it, but it will stop it from flying. Just clip the tips. I wanted my stance as I prepared to another attack. At the last second, I lifted the side, slicing at my angle. My sword beautifully sheared the abiteral stick primary feathers. The monster swerved into the ground, its shoulders and head bearing to the bond of the crash. It let out a cry, and I felt a split second of guilt. That vanished with a yelp as the bird tried to tear me down with its talons. Luckily, the abiturial was designed for swooping down on a prey rather than running on the ground, so it could only hobble out properly. As it stretched and futilely spread its wings, I retreated, grateful that it was even slowing in the care. Here, I whooped through the trees until I finally gave out chase me. <sighs> that sign in relief. I looked back and returned to Kier, who was also at a safe distance. <sighs> Looks like he gave up. Gave up. But what about its young? It'll be fine. The feathers will grow back, and it can still hold back to its nest. Nest. Its babies won't need to eat as consciously at this nice. stage, anyway. You sure know a lot about them. Sure. Thanks for the suggestions. <sighs> I already told you, they are food. Of course I'd know about them. Soon, the forest was quiet once again, with only the sounds of our footsteps and the tap of Kier's welcome stick breaking the silence. Surprisingly, he did not protest when I suggested a safer route, nor when I walked nearly shoulder to shoulder with him. I had the feeling that starting a regular conversation will push my luck, so uh, I kept my mouth shut and instead hoped for no more setbacks. Wow. This is yeah. it? It's not a very deep cape. You simply take a turn and the altar is right there. No complex mazes, no shiny sacred magic lake with a guardian or anything? Hey, we did what we could. This is a modus altar. I took a deep breath and smiled reminiscently. I haven't been there in years. I think I came before to make the occasional offering around harvest season. I gave here a cheerful look, but he continued forward, ignoring my recollections. I shook and follow, quickly catching up to him. Kier accurately nailed down before the altar, discarding the walking stick once he was comfortable. His eyes closed with a softened skull, almost as if he was meditating. Suddenly, his mineral-like ears perk, and he stared directly at the statue. There was no change in the atmosphere, but I could tell Kier was angry. His son tiny gripped my knee. His knee. I know we're connected. I demand that you remove this stupid curse. He fell silent, and I looked around in amusement. He was talking to someone? But I could not hear the other half of the conversation, for some reason that made me even more attempting as I tried to piece everything together. You can't be serious. So I said a few things, but... Huh? Yes, I met one. That's how I found the altar in the first place. He whirled towards me in blinking confusion. 
as if studying me for the first time. I stiffened, wondering why he was staring at me so intensely. Once he finally turned away, I relaxed, although I could not help but feel anxious about the discussion. What about me? Weak, pathetic, gives strange names to animals. Doesn't seem to know much about Ishtera, or how the world works. <sighs> Is he referring to heaven kind in general, or just me? What? Uh, I guess their food is 12 decent or something. What? No! No, 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 no! You're not sending me on a pointless, inspirational quest! I, I'm not a child! I can't even walk in this form! S so your plan is. At that moment, a blinding light flashed from where Care went standing, and I flinched in shock. Whoa, here? By the time I had to kneel down and warmly grab his shoulder, the flash had already disappeared. In one smooth movement, he removed my hand and stood up without the welcome squeak. His eyes still seemed focused beyond me, and he's loading now to himself. Um, did your powers return or something? He standing his palm and lurched towards the ground, slamming it against the hearthstone. Whoa. <laughs> the entire cave shook. The tremor visibly and mentally shook me as well, and my heart pounded loudly. I felt so paralyzed that I couldn't even scream. Once I found my balance, I looked bewildered at Akir, who smugly flexes on a harmed fingers. I stared curiously at his cocksure expression. So, uh... He barely glanced in my direction. It's not exactly what I wanted. However, a portion of my original powers and stranger back, along with my balance. I can actually be comfortable in this form now. Yeah, he gave a dismissive quick to the welcome stick, then promptly walked away from the altar. I must stir at a small smile. Right, right. Well, that's promising at least. What will you do next? Do what he ordered me to do and uh, become normal again. I can handle this on my own. Oh, so you don't need to follow me. I had to anyway. There was only one way out of the cave. But as soon as we were in open air, Kier took off running with a grace and speed I'm sure no real heaven guy could ever replicate. I blinked once, and sure enough, I was alone. I scratched the back of my head, still absorbing what just happened. You're a, uh, welcome. Burying my heart in my hands, I shook up my hair in frustration. Was I, uh, expecting something from this? Well, I think you will be nice. I top my sword hill from restaurance. It's what a knight does. They help the weak and demonstrate their generosity when it is needed. Well, here's not weak anymore. He can definitely take care of himself now. I guess uh, my duty is done. Mission complete! Just some experience as a reward and a discarded welcome stick. Decided not to linger any longer, I start walking back toward Barry. My parents will certainly be worried by now. Well, wow. I'm expecting this to go and go. Darkness, guided by a beaten heart. I can't tell where the journey will end, but I know where to start. They tell me I'm.